Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. The privilege is mine to welcome each of you to our live stream Sabbath service this morning as we have been brought safely through another week to fellowship on this day of rest and gladness. Continue with us as we have kingdom children, paws, claws, God's tails and trails. This week, we'll be learning about wisdom. Hmm, I wonder which animal we'll be learning about wisdom from. Something creepy crawly, I heard. But wait and you will see what animal that we have featured today on Paws, Claws, God's Tales and Trails. Stay on with us as we have our CQ lesson by Brother Colonel Charles and Brother Davlum Braffitt. And after that, we'll have our adult lesson moderated by Sister Natasha Brown Allen. So let's say a word of prayer before we get into this morning's program. Dear kind and loving Father, Lord, we want to thank you for your blessings and your grace. We thank you for sparing our lives where we can come together in one accord, although we may be in different places, to worship you. Father, as we as we take in this morning's program, we pray that your Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, may it nourish our souls so that we can be buoyed up for our new week ahead. So Lord, keep us in your presence this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Don't go away, stay right there as Kingdom Children is up. What time is it? Sabbath boys and girls and welcome to Kingdom Children Preparing for Eternity. I know you are wondering where Auntie Anya is. Don't worry, she is fine. She asked me to stay with you while she isn't around and I'm so excited to be here with you. My name is Jirel, but while I'm here, you can call me Auntie J. Auntie Anya has entrusted me to spend Sabbath mornings with you. I have been following this new series, Paws, Claws, God's Tails and Trails. Wow, what awesome creatures we have right here in Tobago. And there is so much we can learn about them and from them. Today, our animal has no paws and claws, but it does move on trails and sure has a tail. It is a heavy animal, classified as a reptile and has beige body markings on a dark brown background. They can grow up to 12 feet. Have you guessed which animal is being featured today? I am sure you know the animal by now and you are probably cringing. Well, let, let me help you change your focus for now. It's time to praise the Lord. So let's get ready. Are you ready? I sure hope you are, and remember to share this link so others can be blessed. I've got peace like a river, i got peace like a river, i got peace like a river. Shut 
best love being in the open fields? To be honest, I love being outside. But there is one thing that I actually want to encounter while I am playing or gardening. Can you guess what that one thing is? If you said meeting a snake curled up or crawling around, then you are very correct. Yes, I love snakes. While some people don't like snakes, some people love snakes so much they keep them as pets. I know they say that there are no poisonous snakes in Tobago, but poisonous or no poisonous, I do not want to get on the angry side of any snake. Speaking of snakes, I thought I would share my fate with you on what it means to be wise. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent was very wise. Sadly, he used his wisdom to deceive Eve. Why do I think he was wise? Let me tell you in the Bible. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. What does it say there? It says, in my own words, I send you out like sheep. But remember that there are big bad wolves out there who want to eat you like little red riding hood. I want you to be wise when you go out there so you can be safe. Do you like my kid version of the text? Who doesn't want to be wise? I am sure we all want to be wise like the wise King Solomon. Well, I don't just believe that we can be wise. I know we can be wise. God said in James chapter one, verses five to six, he said, if any of you isn't wise and you would like to be wise, ask me for wisdom and and I will grant it unto you. I love when God makes promises. Unlike your parents and friends who sometimes change their minds after they make promises, God does not change his mind. If he says it, he means it. I believe that wisdom has the power to keep us out of trouble. The next time you need wisdom to make a wise choice, ask God. That's my fate I hold dear to my heart that God will hear and answer your prayers. He will keep his words and bless us. I hope it is your, fav your favorite faith too. Have a happy Sabbath and remember to share your faith with others around you. It's the Jesus thing to do. I am back. I 
was looking for Uncle Michael, whose family manages the Corbin Wildlife Park in Mason Hall, right here in Tobago. He was stopped by very soon to chat with us. Wasn't that an awesome song service? And did you see who touched the snake? We sure do have some brave kingdom children. After all, in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, God says, Fear not, for I am with you. Oh, there's Uncle Michael. He's sitting at the table. Let's go across and listen to him. Right, so morning everyone. My name is Michael Corbin of Corbin Local Wildlife Park. And I just want to welcome everyone to Corbin Local Wildlife Park. And I also want to take a little bit of time to tell you why we built the park and started this entire project. So sadly, right now in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a overhunting problem. So we have too many hunters for the size of our island, and we have too many people eating the wildlife. Now, sadly, the overhunting is actually worse in Tobago than in Trinidad. It is so bad in Tobago that we have actually lost animals from the island. So we have lost animals like our deer. We used to have deer in Tobago. A lot of people don't know that. We also lost our wild hogs. So locally, we would call them the wild hogs, but the correct name for them are the peccary, but we lost our wild hogs as well. We also lost our morocoi, which are land turtles, or tortoise. We had tortoises in Tobago. And we also lost our ocelots. They are the, a predator cat. They look similar to a cheetah, but only half the size. So we also lost those animals. So on this little island, we lost so many animals already. So here at the park, we try to educate people on the animals. Tell them what we have, what we used to have, and why we should not eat the animals. Because each animal has their own little purpose or role in the forest. We also rescue and rehabilitate animals here. So when you come here to visit us, most of the animals you will see have been rescued or they have been born here. Because we have an active breed and release program as well. So all the animals we have here in the park, we try to have them breeding. So the young ones, once they are strong enough, we can release back into the wild. So we can try to bring back up the wildlife population bit by bit. And we also want to try and reintroduce some of the animals that have been lost. So we want to get the deer, the wild hog, the ocelot, the morocois. We want to get all those animals here, get them breeding, so someday we can bring them back to Tobago. And that's pretty much all we're doing on the park here at the moment. If you want to find out anything else, you can come here and visit us at Corbin Local Wildlife Park. We're located in Mason Hall, Tobago, on the Belmont Farm Road. And you can contact us on our number 327-4182. I'll say it again, 327-4182. And also, 268-3096. 268-3096. You can also contact us on Facebook. You can simply type in Corbin Local Wildlife Park. Or if you want to email us, the same thing. We also have a website, which is Tobago Wildlife. You can find us there as well. And just simply give us a call and come and visit us. Thanks, Uncle Michael. We are very grateful that the Corbin family has allowed us to learn about the interesting animals that we have in Tobago. The red-tailed boa or boa constrictor is found in Tobago, and though it may look intimidating, it is actually non-venomous. Do you know what that means, boys and girls? It means it's not poisonous. In fact, the snakes found in Tobago are all non-venomous. These snakes have poor vision and rely on specialized heat-sensing cells to locate their prey. Now, why all this talk about this snake? And what on earth can we learn from snakes, you may ask? Well, our Bible treasure for today answers that question. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, King James Version, it says, Behold, I send you forth in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Although we think of snakes as a symbol of evil, God is telling us we need to be wise as snakes. Yes, snakes are considered wise. The word wise means having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. 
In all of Bible treasure, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He was teaching them about having the right attitude when telling others about God's love. You see, boys and girls, snakes are considered wise. They blend into their environment, and when they move into a new territory, they stay quiet. And most snakes have the ability to remain unnoticed. It is possible to walk right past a snake and not see it. When the snake senses danger, it crawls away. This helps the snakes stay protected as they explore and settle into their new environment. The snakes are actually strategizing. As we live in this world, boys and girls, Jesus wants us to be wise, to look out and be aware of what is going on around us as we share the good news about him. Sometimes you may meet a friend, even a stranger who doesn't want to hear about Jesus. Although you are excited to share the good news that Jesus loves them, don't get angry, be wise as a snake and stay low, even quiet. Another opportunity will come along. Jesus doesn't want us to be full of self and get upset when preaching or sharing the gospel with others. That's why he asks us to be wise like a snake. Jesus wants us to be wise, to strategize. And like a snake, there are times when we have to stay quiet and observe what is happen happening around you and take time with Jesus' help to understand what is taking place around you. Let's say our Bible treasure together. Are you ready? Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 says, Behold, I send you forth in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Chains are gone up and set free. My 
God my Savior in Christ in me and like a flood in mercy rain unending love amazing grace oh fuck been set free my God my Savior in Christ in Do you know what the longest snake in the world is? I sure do. It's a reti reticulated python. He can grow to a length of six whole meters. That jets about 20 feet long. Actually, that's about five times my height. That is long indeed. Do you know that we have pythons in Tobago? Maybe illegally or maybe as pets. But people generally think the boa constrictor as a python, but they two snakes belong to different families. They have similar characteristics, but they're surely not related. So let's tell the kids some more about the boa constrictor. Sure, let's go. The boa constrictor is a shy and non-venomous snake. He minds his business and hopes that others around him can do that too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, this guy got his name because of a favorite char characteristic of his. He constricts his muscles and crushes anything he desires to eat. There are no cousins to the infamous Akundas who behave in a similar way. But why are they called wise? For many reasons. Let me name a few. Baby boys are born with the instincts to hunt. No one tells them to or show them how to hunt. They just know it all. As they get older, they naturally adjust their prey to satisfy their tummies. They do not overeat. Once filled, they stay that way for a while. I also think that the fact that they sense through their tongues help them to distinguish them as wise. Also, snakes are wise because they can feel vibes. They know if people are around them are friendly or not. They have deep feelings and can sense how others feel around them. I think that's cool. I think so too. I guess that's why God said to be as wise as serpents. Not only are they very, very perceptive, but they are also fickle and instinctive. Boys and girls, God wants us to be wise. He wants us to be the head and not the tail. He wants us to be aware of what is going on around us. I also think that he expects us to be non-venomous without hurting others with our tongue. You know, that's one very good point. I doubt that the snake just lashes its tongue out at everyone and anyone. Whether it does or does not, I hope to never be at the end of its tongue. Boys and girls, let us remember to be wise as serpents. So, is that our Bible power to for today? Certainly. Our, our Bible, Bible power for today is wisdom. Wisdom. Being smart enough to make a choice to do right. So you see, boys and girls, even though we think about the snake as an evil creature because of the many stories we hear, especially about the snake in the Garden of Eden. We need to remember, the snake as God's creation was not evil. It is the devil who possessed the snake. And yes, the devil or Satan, as he is also called, is the evil one. Today, we learn that we need to be wise as a snake. I trust as you start a new week that you will ask God to help you be observant to act when needed and not before. And most importantly, ask him to give you an opportunity to share God's love with someone. Remember to send in photos of you with your pet 
or with an animal you would have seen at a zoo so we can share it right here with our kingdom children. Email us the info to asitobago at gmail.com and in the subject line, type Paul and Claus. I think we have a few photos and thank you for those, but I would love to see so many more from you boys and girls. Yes, adults, you can send in photos too. Let's take a look at some right now. I hope to see you next time as we continue our series, Paws and Claws, God's Tales and Trails. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for our kingdom children and their parents. Thank you for all our viewers and all the wonderful anime animals you created. Help us to treat each other and the animals with kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, boys and girls, and thanks for having me. See you soon. Pleasant Sabbath and a good morning to all that are viewing online. We want to really wish you a happy Sabbath and we hope that your week was a very productive and spirit-filled one. We are here one more time. We are here to do the inverse lesson study. And the topic this morning, we are going to be dealing with the poor, the poor we do, the extreme giver. With me this morning is Brother Davlon Braffitt. And with God's help, we are going to discuss this lesson this morning. Before we get into the lesson this morning, we'll just have a word of prayer. We invite Brother Davlon to give us that prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to speak and to discuss your word. I ask that your spirit will lead at this time. And as your people listen, that we'll be edified in your name, I pray. Amen. 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 You know, Brother Dav, last week we... Last week we spoke about the the woman, mm -hmm. right? The woman with the oil, yes, the right? Uh, we spoke about uh, and that was another widow, mm -hmm. right? And we're talking about today the poor widow, and it's so fitting that you know just around the corner before we celebrated International Women's Day, and the, and this past few lessons we we are dealing with women, women so we yeah. see that. Women God, giving, women giving. Woman, woman giving. Yes, listen. <laughs> so we see that God really cares about women as well. Oh, yes. Right? And he not only cares about women, but in a society where the rich is said that they are the head and the rich get through and all these things, we see that he cares for the poor widow. Yes, and he, he cares, cares for the poor. Definitely. Right? And, he, and he cares that women should be a part of his work. That's right. To make souls come close, closer. To ah, them. that's right. Because you know the first, the first, the first witness or the first messenger was a woman. Really? Yes, yes. Who, who, who saw Jesus? Who who went and said he is not there? He's risen. He's alive. He's alive. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the first. <laughs> that was the first preacher. That was the first sermon yeah, ever. She tells something, right. right? Yes. <laughs> so you know there are some that says you know women not this time, but we see women have a place. In bringing souls to Everybody, the kingdom, yes, man. right. So we are going to deal with a poor widow, mm -hmm. right? And the is this a summary of the text that were people were bringing in their offerings? You know, the rich would bring in their big offerings mm -hmm. that it would seem and stuff like that. And this poor widow just brought, brought in a few cents, Can we read it? right? Can we read it for you? And uh, yeah, you can go ahead. All right, let me go. And. And he called unto, we was reading from Mark 12, 43. Mm -hmm. And he called unto his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow had cast more in 
than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they had did cast in of their abundance, but she of her, of her want did mm. cast all that she had, even all her living. Powerful. Hmm. So, although others brought more, mm -hmm. right, in terms of the figures, mm -hmm. right, she gave more in terms of her heart. Yes. In terms, in terms of her giving, right? And that is where we are going to be discussing the lesson. That's the lesson right there in a... That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's the lesson right there in a lot of people are for fun. So, let's do That's it based it. on how they want to test it. <laughs> right, so they spoke, they spoke about the, the right place. Mm -hmm. Right, and he was talking about when um, God went to the, when Jesus went to the temple mm -hmm. and saw that they were making money out of the, out of the, um, out of the temple when they should have been assigning it properly, right? And he went and you know what he did, he, he beat, he put some, put on some list to over tables and, right. and stuff like that, right? And it just, um, it just goes to show that those who are in control of the funds, if it is not put to the right use, will be hella comfortable. And will be beaten with many stripes. Many stripes. <laughs> will be beaten with many, 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 many stripes. So, you know, sometimes people may say they're not, they're not, we tell you no know, tithes and pay no offerings because, because they're not the mission. Because they they know what the mission do with money mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That is not our duty. Yes. Right? If they do good, they will bless. Yes. If they do bad, they'll be beaten with many stripes. And, and and the thing is that the giving is is primarily out of our relationship with mm -hmm. God. Yes. That's because, a big, big point. And there. because of that, we are not to let someone damage our relationship with God by not giving. That give is in true. spite of. In spite of. God, we, God is taking record of every time you give. So we not we are not to say, well, it will it will hurt. Let's be real. Yes. It yes. will be it, hurt when it, it will bother you when you <laughs> when, when you see your, your hard earned tights being wasted. Mm -hmm. As we as taxpayers, you know, you, when the government wastes money, you don't like it. Yeah. But you have to give it anyhow. You have to you have to give there's it. There's a requirement that's the to give. Yes, yes we must give. We must we must give. And and, and I so like that because you know the our offerings are a result of what the Lord has done for us. Yes. Right? So holding that back wouldn't hurt the mission or no. wouldn't hurt South Korea. It's a love you expression. Understand? It's an expression of love. Yes. Holding it back, it will hurt us. Yes. It will do more harm to us than than we're trying to do to the mission or this or, or the South Korea. It comes like forgiveness, you know, you don't want to forgive somebody, but forgiveness is for you. Yes. Not really for the person. And God God wants it God, when when we give. Mm -hmm. God is saying, I know you believe in me. Yes. I know that this could do for you something, but you're giving to me, you shouldn't there as there's a sacrifice. And God loves to show up when we give, when we give even when we need it more than we think that, that we need it. Yes. So I really like I really like that really that relationship mm -hmm. point point that uh, that you brought out brought out there, right? right? So the, we just need to just Let's do what God says to do, and, yes. and he, he, he will handle the rest. Let us not try to be, to be judge and jury. And so we are just to give. Let us return our tithe. Let us give our, give our free will. Give our free will exactly. Offering. The lesson brought us some point. The, the first one is that he cares and evaluates our giving practices. Abel's sacrifice, for instance, was weird and considered more than Cain. He is still there every time we, we bring our offering to him. He always weighs how we worship him through them. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the lesson is saying also that our giving is a form of worship. Yes. So hmm. our, the, our intent, our heart, our attitude when we give. So we're not going to say, well, I went to church last week, Saturday, and I put a little $50 <coughs> in there. So mm -hmm. that count. God saying that. I don't want that. Hmm. As our brother say, I do, go the way that money. <laughs> go away clean money yes, yes. from your heart, hmm. from sacrificing. And sometimes when you know that, hey, you could do something with this money, I say, no, this is for God. Yeah. I'm giving God this. The thing come tenfold. That, that, that is true. That, mm -hmm. is, that, that is true. You know, um, it's really, I just said, giving the intention. You know, some people give for all sorts, all sorts of reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, yeah, they're, you give because 
okay, sometimes you're, you're forced to give in, want to look bad. Yeah. You know, say so give, you give because you want somebody to say, yeah, he give this and he give that and thing. But God is not about the show. Yeah, yeah, God is not about yeah, the show. You understand? Never. God cares about your heart. Right? What, what, what is your heart grateful? Is your, is your, is your heart clean? Mm -hmm. Was it what what are your intentions of giving? If your intention is not good, God didn't want it. Exactly. Yeah, son. And could, God didn't want that. And, and the truth be told, we we so we so foolish. God knows how much money in your bank account. Mm -hmm. And God you knows. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know, but God knows. Yes. So God knows when you give that hundred dollars, that looks so nice in the offering bowl. Yeah. And He knows that that was nothing for you to give. Yeah. God did not accept that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As you feel he does. Mm. You're a good person in here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let everybody see the hundred dollars. Yeah. So everybody say, ooh, boom, man. <laughs> loose chain hundred dollars, you know? And sometimes, <laughs> uh, it, it may sound very funny, but some people really consider those things as, as given to God, you know? Mm. And God is saying, but you, you could be a bread. You could do it, not just about money. You mm -hmm. could spend more time in church helping somebody. Yes. You could do something to contribute to, the, to my work. But you're, sometimes you're more concerned with giving that financial dollar. Yes, 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 yes. Than giving of yourself mm -hmm. to, to, to the benefit. Yes, yes. And I, I, like, I like that point, you know. Many, you, you could offer much more things than, than money. Than money. Yeah, not you, could offer, money. you could offer much more things. Anything could be a, anything mm -hmm. to, in fact, whatever you put a, your hands to do, that, that should be an offering to yeah. God. And that that's cause he give you the strength, he give you the wisdom, he gave he he gave you the knowledge. Yeah, and you you did something some about a month ago. You said, boy, Dav, this Sabbath here busy boy. But I go in right in. You know? <laughs> Step yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the morning, I don't take up this. Evening, this. Mm. Saturday night, that. All our church activities. Yeah. You give up of, of your time. And God appreciate that when you could have do with it somewhere else. Yeah, that is true. So we must be committed holistically mm -hmm. for the work of God. Not just financially. Yes, because some people money <laughs> come by easy. So the money is easier so to it's, give. It's not really a sacrifice. Right. But ask them for yeah. the time, they do mm -hmm. have it because they're busy making yeah, money yeah, yeah. to give to the same creator who don't want it. Yeah, and, and as we talk about that time, you know, sometimes uh Carl Carl was like, you know, coming to on a Saturday is not a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Because you have nothing else to do. Yes. Come on, I'll you. Yes. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you. I Come on, I'll show you. Come on, I'll show you. Come on, I'll show you now. Like, that's where the sacrifice is. Yes. <laughs> you know, so it's really, it's really holistic, spiritually, physically, at, yeah. social. You know, because God wants us to be balanced. Mm -hmm. He wants to be off balance. You know, you're, it's fine. You're, you're, you're giving your finances alone, and then what's going on with your time? Yeah. What's going on with your, you know, your talents? We have to be bad. We have to get bad. Sometimes when we don't give God what He deserves, we feel weary. Eh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like your life in a in a quandary. Things not really feel how you want it to feel. Because just just check your giving, hmm. and we're not talking just about money here today. Yeah. Church. Check your giving to God, and hmm. realize that something something off balance. Hmm. Yeah, and you know we really care about smart God. God knows our yeah. heart. So. Let me just be real and come straight and done. Let me let, let, let me enjoy the fool people. Yeah. <laughs> let me, cause you can fool people, but you can't fool God. Let us be let us be straight, come straight and done. Yeah, some be pure and done. You don't know, try, don't <laughs> just let me be pure and done and bring, bring bring it real. Exactly, because he just knows everything. He knows it, he knows it. He, know he just wants to acknowledge and say, okay, I real. Uh, I real. You know, well, me and you just talk often mm -hmm. and you know stuff about me. And you was a banker for a while. Imagine this person coming to you for a loan and asking, am I eligible for this? And then, no, they're not qualifying for it. <laughs> but you've seen everything. You're in the computer. And you, you, we as Christians, we are here asking God for things that we know we're not eligible for because we know we're life true. in a mess. Mm -hmm. And he watching me whole life on the computer. I said, hey, well, you don't have enough. We are reach up to the standard. But you're asking for this. <laughs> yeah, that is true, that is true. And we have to be real with ourselves. We have to be real. And even so, you know, sometimes the system that we, we had, you've seen everything that the person has. And sometimes you'll, you know that the person have, has this loan here, this mm -hmm. loan here, this loan there. But you're still asking them, what do you have? And they'll tell you they have nothing. 
<laughs> you have nothing, but you're seeing it there. You're seeing it there. You're seeing it there. You're seeing it there. And then I say, well, we seen that time, and they will say, oh, yeah, yeah, no remember, no remember. But we're not supposed to be there. They come clean and done. This ring a wrong thing with God, this ring a wrong thing with Jesus and Christianity. What well, kind of thing. that? Let nah. me hear that all it all. Let me come to the man straight. Let me just offer we whole self. Sacrifice. Let's off, let's offer we self. I like you that know? thing. You know, like sometimes it. It, it, it ain't easy sometimes, eh? It ain't easy sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have, you know, you have your people around and stuff like that. You know, you have your influences yeah. around you know something you peer, you peer pressure and stuff like that but we try to try to you know really hold on to god and it boils down to the as i said the relationship yeah. with god you know we really enjoy this lesson queen and, and go and with the with the with the go like that kind of and that is sugar <laughs> pan kind of fit. He like everything yeah, to be yeah, dramatic, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he like, like that, when they know that sugar pan dry. He like that, 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 that kind of no hope yeah, kind of vibe. That, that, that no, they snow me. I will serve you. I will die yeah, after his yeah, last yeah, breath. Yeah, yeah. And hmm. what I like about it is that God never, never, never embarrassed us as Christians. Mm, that is true. He never showed us up and said, wait, boy. Is that Christian how we live in, boy? And he sacrificed now. Nah. God always, mm. sh always shows up for us yeah. in that time. Mm -hmm. that he likes the drama, but he always comes true. That is true. Even though sometimes sure. they might be saying, we well, buy under pressure, under pressure. And so, but you, see, you are still blessed. Mm -hmm. You are still blessed. You are still here. You, know, you could still say that you're under pressure. Yes. <laughs> and can it, I like to look back, not like Lot's wife, mm -hmm. look back <laughs> to see that. But God bring me through this, boy. Yeah. Every week I like to look back and say, but God bring me through mm -hmm. this. And that should increase my faith for another week to come. So know that when things are hard one more time again, I can say, even I give him a last price coming mm. through for me. Yes, and um, hmm, that, is, that, that, that is true. Even, 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 even in a last, even in a last. And the, the widow gave what she had and pump. You understand? She didn't stick wrong. To see what other people do and what yeah. other people giving. She give what she have and she handles, she do, she handles this and she go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she ain't saying back and in the so 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 so. Let me so see what yeah. he give. Nah, he ain't giving up. She give, she she come, she do what she has to do and pump. Uh, so and sometimes we have to just, we have to come, do what we have to do for, for God and, and, leave. and yeah. go away. Yeah. Sometimes we don't have to be making excuse. She don't come and say, well, I, well, I, well, I, this all I bring because so and so, you know. No. We don't have to explain ourselves to like nobody, excuses, you know. Yeah. You understand? We don't have to make excuses. Excuse sometimes. I have to make excuses. People excuse this and that. But die between you and your God. Yeah. If they have to talk, let them talk. You have to, you have, you have to answer to nobody. Give your best. Give your best. Just give your best and, and God will do the rest. Because I can say that the, 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 the rich businessmen who came to giving their big money was high and mighty. Mm -hmm. They yes. want to see what the next business friend give. Mm -hmm. And you know they compared herself, and she came looking all wretched and bruised, mm -hmm. gave her best and left. And God said, "This is what I want." Yes. So sometimes when we think that we're giving the best. God <laughs> said, "Boy, yeah, really, yes. and that yeah, basket, yeah, that yeah. basket they bring in church, you can have give five instead of giving two. <laughs> Why you know? for sure, boy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. anytime you sit, you're thinking to consider what you're giving, you're not giving enough. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. We as we as believers have a part to play. Yeah, the lesson was a really was a really eye opener. Because yeah. in the lesson is 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 it spoke about um people who um who hold back the offerings. Yeah. Um who hold back the offerings and thinking and you're proud that you of what you did. Right? Because I say, okay, this is what budget I give that. Mm -hmm. yeah, son, I give that me and giving me and giving no more. Yeah, son, and you and live in life and I feel proud. You understand? <laughs> you feel you feel so proud that you know me and give these all I give and I, I give. Yeah. You understand? And I'm living my life good and stuff like that. But you could give more. You understand? <laughs> you see, you see how your um your tea and tech bellers fluctuate. <laughs> like how your tights and all must fluctuate. In a positive way. Yes, in a positive never way. Go down. Yeah. But knowing that things you get that extra blessing, mm -hmm. something happen more, you give more. You know, if things hard and God said, well, this is all I could give, he accepts it the same way. That's what, right. what, we, what we look at basically is the amount we give. Yes. So if we can't give what we are accustomed giving mm -hmm. because of our situation, God saying, are you still sacrificing in the hard time to give me? That's what I appreciate. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? 
So we, t- we stick it so much to be um, the 10%. You're working for 5,000, 10% of 5,000. <laughs> so if you can't ever, I don't want you to read me wrong now, we couldn't, you? because mm-hmm. I want you to say, like, if you could make, if you make less, give whatever. But go say, <laughs> even in a hard time, go and see how best you could give or whatever you could sacrifice for. Mm-hmm. Because I can't give none at all. Go and say, this man still sacrificing. Mm-hmm. But we don't really thought that because <laughs> we want the same amount every time, right? But go and see beyond that. Yes, yes, yes. That is true. Big points, man. Big points. Mm-hmm. Right? And the and as I was talking about, you were talking about that figure thing, you talk about they came and they came back and talk about and the the proportions. Mm-hmm. Right? Because they said that um figures wise, you know, the, the rich people numbers will be big. Yeah. Right? But in terms of the proportion wise, I just say that hundred dollars might be a small thing for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, son, but for a person who wears content, the hundred dollars is, is a month. <laughs> uh, son, that hundred dollars is a, and and that is what that is what that is what God looks at. God looks at, you know, how how how, how much you put how much trust. Offer off offer things to me based on how much you trust me. Mm-hmm. Let me see how much you <laughs> let me see how much yeah. you trust me. You know, let me see how much well, I'm talking. If our money is doing the talking and shows all of our feet, hmm. we may have a problem. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. This lesson. Yeah, yeah. we have a problem. <laughs> and the next point I was thinking about as I was talking at Kenya is that um we must see the opportunity to help others. You be given unto God, not just because of the church organization, yeah. but given unto God by helping others who may need. And that will bring that will help our experience because sometimes we help somebody and they give back to God as well yeah. in that experience because it was real to them. Sometimes we only give to the church and we sign off. <laughs> right now, check for your title yeah, and offering yeah, 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 yeah. and we sign off of, of our, our spiritual giving. And that also, God requires more from mm. us. Because if we ain't giving till we hurt, we ain't give at all. Yeah. And you know, last week, uh, the North says, and he came back here, mm-hmm. if Men will become channels through which heaven's blessing can flow to others. The Lord will keep that channel supplied. Mm-hmm. You know, although I feel he went ahead of us. <laughs> I feel he went ahead yeah, last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But you know, if if you're blessing others, if the Lord see you're blessing others and your heart in the right place, the pipe open. Right? That channel will continue to, to be to be open. A blessing, yeah. It will continue to be a it, it, it will be continue to be a blessing. And that that wouldn't say that you will not struggle, eh? That doesn't say what you're doing will not have hiccups. Cause, mm-hmm. cause the, the devil seen that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the devil wants to mash it up too. But we just have to hold on, hold on to God, you know, have the relationship with him and he will know what left to take and, and what right to take. And that challenge shows us that whatever means we could um, you know, in private lives to donate to somebody, to, to give on, to let's ask, let, allow the Lord to lead you to help someone. Once you sac- put that commitment, God will always make a way for that to continue happening. You know, yeah. if it's some kind of gift for whatever it may be. So we have to be able to give, give, give mm. because time's hard. And we will say we want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God understands that time is hard. Hmm. God understands that all of your hard mo- money, you deserve it. <laughs> you need to do things yeah. with it. And not just give, give extreme. Hmm. <laughs> <That's different>. <laughs> <laughs> give extreme. Because I have so much plans, couldn't yeah, yeah, yeah. you? Know, we have things we want to accomplish. But God wants us to give out of our hearts. Hmm. That, that, that is true. Because, you know, we can't we can carry them up there. Them things that you want that to is, come that's, to. That's our next story. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of balance, you know. We have to occupy you till it come, yes. But you can't carry them up there. You know, it's a, it's a balance that and you need to get. You can't carry till you grieve Yeah, yeah, that is true. It's a, balance. it's a balance that we have to seek to get. Where we're balancing, you know, the giving. We're balancing, you know, the the the, the doing stuff while on earth yeah. here, you know. It's a, it's a good balance. But the the idea is to, to give. And give it a pure heart. Correct. Give. And give. Don't, don't say nothing more to give any. Right. You know how that, how that faith yeah. and how that trust like like that widow had. You know, she gave knowing that, you know, you're supposed to give and God will God will um 
speak and, up. And I'm going to read that clearly. It said, in the case of the poor widow, however, there, there were true reason to distrust, right? Mm -hmm. Even so, she decided to do what was right in God's sight and was commended by Jesus. She firmly believed that God cannot be mocked, that he, he <laughs> not only watches how we give, but also the how funds are managed after we give. He says, I, the Lord, shall search the heart. I test the mind and even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So mm. she, she didn't know the guy. Yeah. She didn't know him when he come in the house and asked her. She laughs. But she said, you know what? This is this foolish faith. I'm going to have it. I know this had to be Jesus in this man. Yeah. And when she did that, her whole life changed around. Whole life Sometimes changed. we don't know why. And we must have this, we must still have the um the spirit of discernment, uh, which is true yeah. Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. But once we have that mindset, when that opportunity comes, let me miss it. Because mm. it's more. Yeah, because when you when you when you give you, 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 you work bad enough, you don't even treat me with that. He ended up losing everything after. And, and, God, <laughs> and he could have changed that by this giving. He could have changed that by this giving. You so, know? Couldn't he win it and get hold on to more the dog and the bone <laughs> in the water? And to lose it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we just have to, to have the relationship with God and have the faith and trust. Yeah, you, 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 you would not have faith, you would not have trust if you don't know who God is. Mm -hmm. You understand? You wouldn't have that. So you have to try, you have to have a relationship with him, and then you will know that he will never leave you or forsake Yes, and God, right? is our, God is our true motivation behind what we do. And these, the, what we are talking about here today does not come just from, um, from, from human nature. It is not natural. Yeah. You know, a lot of persons who may be wealthy or who don't have, don't necessarily do these things out of natural, natural ability. There must be the, the motivation must be Christ. The motivation can only be Christ in you mm -hmm. to have that mindset to do it. Because killing everybody else, when they say one dollar, they say one dollar. <laughs> you know? They don't see multiplication. <laughs> and the lesson was saying that um, God had to be the craziest mathematician. Hmm. When when they, when you think that, hey, how are we multiplying this? How I take, how I take it for myself and getting an addition. Yeah. You know, God maths never. Never matters at mm. all. And um, we as Christians have to really have, use him as from our mode. He must be our motivation and our giving. It may not make sense, Colonel, but it makes yeah. sense to trust God. Amen. That, 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 that's a big yeah. point there to close on. So, church viewers, we enjoyed this lesson. It was also one that tied into last week's lesson. So it was really a nice giving. And then we give extreme this week. Yeah. Let's continue. So, so next week we'll be over here. Give your life. Extremely, give everything. <laughs> we'll, let's see. You know, so um, <laughs> let's continue to study God's word and use God as our true motivation as we study, as we give and live a life here on earth. We are soldiers of the army of God. And God needs us more than ever. So let's give our time, our resources, and everything that we have so that God will can be furthered. I will serve him. Amen. So we we'll see you next week as we give more. Amen. Let us pray. Father, well, we want to thank you so much for coming by here with us this morning as we discuss the lesson. I pray that we'll have that relationship with you. We'll really get to know you so that our faith and our trust in you will be where they want to be. Help us that we'll take all the lessons, all the stories, all the parables, We'll put them into our daily lives so that we may be closer, have a closer walk with you and in turn bringing souls closer to you. So let's take charge of this program, continue to bless ESI, continue to <clears throat> bless each one who, who is behind the scenes and everything as you go into the adult lesson study, take charge as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, ESI family. We trust you had a great week. This is the Adult Lesson Study Time, and I am Natasha Brown Allen. In last week's lesson, Lesson 9, Beware of Covetousness, one of our viewers, Hadis Sahari, commented in the chat, Judas coveted the money and not having the Lord fully in his heart. John added, 
think of who owns what you claim is yours, everything belongs to God. And that is so true. Everything we own or we think we own, we are just stewards of it because it all belongs to God. Let's review our three quiz questions from last week before we begin this week's lesson. Our first quiz question was a fill in the blank. Covetousness has been defined as an inordinate blank for wealth or passions that really don't belong to you. What was that missing word? If you typed desire, then that answer is correct. Number two, what was the memory text for that week? The answer is Luke 12, 15, which told us to take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist of the, uh, in the abundance of the things he possesses. And number three, covetousness is a problem of the heart. Was that true or false? Ah, if you said true, then your answer is correct. So thank you so much for your participation in that quiz. And we just want to backtrack to lesson eight, planning for success, and shout out Indra Perry um, for participating in that quiz. In that lesson, Banda Hazelwood defined success as being at peace with God and human beings, stressing on the word peace. Lisa C. agreed and shared, Amen to that. Good success includes choosing a good spouse too. Jesus is mine no matter what. Trust God and wait. His timing is not our timing. He will always work things out. Brenda John added, God knows our faithfulness, and if we are faithful in little, he will entrust us with much. Beautiful counsel there that we pulled out from the chat to share with you this morning. So thank you so much for your comments and your participation. And we look forward to your participation today in our lesson. Remember to type in the chat as I ask the questions to my panelists. You type your answers in the chat and make it a lively discussion in the chat. And when we get to the end of the lesson with the questions, type your que answers to the questions in the chat. Remember, if you don't have an adult lesson study guide, you can download one at absg.adventist.org. So we trust you have your quarterlies your Bibles, and your writing material handy as we get into this week's lesson, Lesson 10, Giving Back, as we are coming to the end of this quarter on managing for the Master till he comes. Joining me this week, I have my two brothers, Pastor Richard Frederick, and in the middle, Elder Milton Eastman. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you very much. We're glad to be here. Amen. Well, Let's ask Pastor Frederick to pray before we begin. Join us as we pray. Let us pray. Father, unto thee we give thanks for the gift of thy Holy Spirit. May he guide us into all truths as we share this lesson that you have given, that it will be done indeed with clarity and authoritatively. This is our prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that prayer. The introduction for this week's lesson points out, and rightfully so, that as people get older, they almost naturally begin to worry about the future. The most common fears are dying too soon, before the family is even taken care of, living too long, outliving one's assets or savings, catastrophic illness, all one's resources could go at one time, or mental and or physical disability who will take care of me is that true or true it's true as we get older we worry about these things but sister white and commenting on these fears wrote in testimonies for the church volume one page 424 all these fears originate with satan mm -hmm. if they meaning us would take the position which god have would have them their last days might be their best and happiest. They should lay aside anxiety and burdens and occupy their time as happily as they can and be ripening up for heaven. I really love that last part. Mm. Brother Melton, what are your immediate thoughts on this quotation? You know, um, as Seventh-day Adventists, we teach healthy living and, and holistic well-being. And uh, one of the things that we um, encourage as um, Pastor Isaiah, as the health director, he would back me up on that, is a new start principle. And what I have found in my 
20 plus years as a Seventh-day Adventist is that there's one that um, most of us as Seventh-day Adventists don't pay a lot of emphasis on, which is trust in God, that last mm. key in the New Start principle. And, uh, you know, that is the antidote for depression, for anxiety, for mental problems. And, you know, it, it seems that those conditions are prevalent among us. And, uh, you know, it, it, God has not given us a spirit of fear, as it said in the Bible. So, you know, we as Christians have to make a deliberate, deliberate effort to ensure that we are not overtaken by this kind of fear of dying too soon, living too long, catastrophic illness, mental or physical illness. So that's my initial thought on that. Excellent. And what I liked about this statement is that she's saying that our happiest years, you know, and our best years should be our latter years. Mm -hmm. If we do that one thing, put our trust in God. Yes. Our memory text for this week comes from Revelation 14, 30, which says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Let's put this into context. How does our memory text tie into this week's lesson, Pastor Frederick, in your estimation? All right. So, Sister Natasha, we see that our lesson is entitled Giving Back. Yes. And this text here is saying that even though someone has experienced death, you know, they are considered blessed. Even in debt, and, and mm. that's, you know, sometimes mind-boggling. How can someone, someone be blessed? Like in when, death. Yes, in debt. And, and, and it is actually seen in the context of the lesson that that person, even um, in debt, can still give to the cause of the Lord because their works do follow them. Mm -hmm. Yes? And so even after you are no longer alive, mm -hmm. according to proper planning, estate management, etc., you could ensure that something is given to the cause of the Lord so that, you know, afterwards you, you still have a legacy behind you along the lines of, of the Lord's work. I like that. Giving back to God. After all, it all belongs to Him, right? So why not ensure that we leave something for the cause of God? Let's go to Luke 12, 16 through 21. Now, we won't have time to read it here, but we trust that you will read it at home. But this is the parable of the rich fool. It almost comes across like an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> the rich fool. Having read this parable, um, paraphrase and share the relevant messages that you would have gathered from this parable for us today. Mm -hmm. So we see the, the, the rich fool. Um, he's rich. He has, you know, lots of things. He has bands. He has an abundance of things. And, you know, there was an increase. And, and due to that increase, this individual decided to, instead of helping others, you know, to tear down what he already had and build something bigger so that he could store more. And, and, and Jesus Christ refers to this person as a fool. Why? Hmm. Because of the self-centeredness that was demonstrated in this individual's life. You see, we were all created in the image and in the likeness of God. And being created in the image and likeness of God, you know, the image of God is all about love. It's all mm -hmm. about other centeredness. It's all about serving others. And so we are blessed to be a blessing. blessing. And so this yeah. individual, instead of seeking to bless others and showing himself to be other centeredness, he degraded himself. He was living below his purpose. He was living below the standard by completely focusing on self. And so as a result of that, he was described as a fool. Hmm. Brother Milton? Yes. You know, um, this is quite interesting because when I observe, you know, um, fellow men in the church, hmm. that we seem to live our lives, many of us, 
um, in that same self-centered way, in that in our working years, our productive years, we seek to just work for enough to take care of the family mm -hmm. and pay some bills and so on. And um, we're not primarily interested in some of the other to, to, to go extra in terms of serving more people and so on. Okay, yeah. So another thing is that many of us can't wait till we reach the retirement age, compulsory retirement age, to retire, to relax, and to get that NIS and government mm -hmm. pension mm -hmm. so that we could stay home and, you know, and just um, relax and, you know, just live off of that income that comes without having to go to work. But many persons of that age have great potential to earn much more than the pension. Mm -hmm. True. And you know, people just prefer not to serve hmm. because in working you have to do some kind of service to others or mm -hmm. produce some kind of goods to satisfy others' needs. And people just, you know, they prefer to to, to just retire, to just and stop contributing. Mm -hmm. And they don't matter how the poor are fed, how, how the homeless are, 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 are placed in homes, how the, the new churches would be built mm -hmm. to spread the gospel. So, you know, that, that is something that we have to consider as Christians, that we could sh serve right down to the end like Bible characters, mm -hmm. rather than you know, just thinking about ourselves, having enough stored up for ourselves and our family, and that's it. And that's it. I like that. So give back even in your senior years, yes? yes? Someone was asked the famous evangelist Billy Graham, who was in his 60s at the time, what surprised him most about life? Graham's answer was the brevity of it. Amen. No question, life goes by quickly. At one time, you're in your teens, looking forward to your 20s. And then 20s pass, you don't even know where it's gone. You're in your 30s. 40s creeps up on you, and before you can wink, it's 50s. And right after that, the 60s hit you, and you're like, wait, where did all this time go? 70s. And you're celebrating 70 years of life, and now you're saying, I'm now starting to live. <laughs> you know? And so you can give to the Lord up until your dying breath. A good friend of mine said recently at his father's funeral, life is like B to D. It's that short. Hmm. Literally, birth, B, birth to D, death. Hmm. What is between B and D? The letter C. What does C stands, stand for in this scenario? Choices. So between birth and death, we have choices to make mm -hmm. that will affect how we die and in whom we die and what happens after we die, whether we'll be in the first resurrection or the second resurrection. All these choices that we make also affect our assets, what we have or what we don't have, the choices that we make, our health, it affects our families, it affects everything around us. So let's look at some biblical examples of um, characters in the Bible who made prudent life choices that in the end benefited their families and left a positive legacy that lasted for generations. And on the flip side, let's look at examples of those who did not. Let's go to Pastor Frederick. Right, so examples of those who left a legacy, we have... Um, three standout characters, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Um, we could even go a bit further and include, you know, um, men like David, even Solomon, you know. David in particular, you know, he stored up for Solomon to build the temple of the living God, and that was indeed exceptional. He yeah. ensured that all the materials yeah. would, yes. So, so that was great. We have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, they ensured that while they were yet alive, that their offsprings understood what was in store for them. That was the practice, that was the culture of the time that they lived in. Um, but then we look on the flip side, we see the prodigal son. His father 
um, stood up for him. Mm -hmm. His father allowed him to know exactly well. The culture allowed them to know what, what was mm -hmm. their, you know, inheritance. Yeah, right. and, and he took his inheritance early. Hmm. Um, it may not be wrong to take your inheritance early, hmm. but it's how he used the inheritance, mm -hmm. the choices that he made, and so he squandered the inheritance. We, we, we also have um, Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and I want to just let us look at this example because he didn't squander it directly mm -hmm. like the prodigal son. His squandering was more indirect, mm -hmm. yes? His father gave him so much, and he said, well, look, my father gave so much, it is now my time mm -hmm. to enjoy all, mm -hmm. you know? So you, you, you leaders don't try to you know, cheat me out of my inheritance mm -hmm. by giving me less than what is due to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, as a result of that, the Bible tells us that the kingdom was separated 10-1. Mm -hmm. That's how the Bible puts it, right? Mm -hmm. um, Ten tribes went one way, and he was left with Judah, and Simeon right in the middle of, of, of Judah. And then he was besieged, and the, the Bible record states that where Solomon had gold, he had to replace it with silver because mm -hmm. all the gold was taken out of the palace mm -hmm. when the enemies came. That was unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, he squandered yeah. his legacy by making self-centered as against other-centered choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that one is a very big one, Pastor. Very interesting there. And I like that point. Make what other centered Center. choices yeah. as opposed to self-centered choices? I like that point. Yeah. First Timothy 6, 6 to 7 says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Where does that leave us then? How should this text inform our life choices, Elder Milton? You know, um, Though we can't take anything out of the world because we brought nothing into the world, um, it's still, I don't think it's, it's, it's um, good stewardship mm -hmm. to just live your life, die, and walk away leaving whatever God would have blessed you with with no proper planning or no, um, or, or, or no organized way of leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. And... You know, many of us in the church don't consider that. And the unfortunate thing is that we do most of our income earning down in the latter part of our years. Mm -hmm. And we need to pay some more attention to estate planning in the mm -hmm. church. All right? And uh, many of us may not know a whole lot about that, but fortunately we have lawyers, mm -hmm. right, that we could pay. And, um, and, you know, they could help us with estate planning because I think that those large set of funds and assets that we we um we accumulate and that you know most of it we um accumulate at the end of our lives um you know we need to really organize it and estate planning even with a trust could even stipulate behaviors mm -hmm. right and i i am not thinking only in monetary terms because sometimes I am saying that even by the examples I set in the choices I make, that same C in the middle, mm -hmm. that leaves a legacy for my children mm -hmm. because a lot of time they would model after how they see you handle challenges in life. So we need to think more about the land and the house and so on that we would have accumulated and paid off for mm -hmm. and that we have there and we just walk away, we leave it a lot of legal fees to organize it and whatever when you when you leave it and you didn't do any proper estate planning mm -hmm. so we need to pay more attention to that in the church and, and if i could add just quickly you know i i drive around tobago and i'm looking here and there because i am not so young I'm mature mm -hmm. uh, but interested in you know housing for my family and i'm seeing so many abandoned mm -hmm. houses yes. you know so much yeah. so many empty houses so many broken down, you know, homes or properties and, and, and 
you know, it, it, it's hurtful to see such, knowing that so many individuals are wanting a home, and, and, yeah. and it's all because of, either, of no estate planning, no estate planning <laughs> or improper planning or mm -hmm. probably trying to do everything at the point of death as against doing it according to the culture that we see in the Bible while you were yet alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, you yeah. know, allowing individuals to, you know, have what is yours but is actually theirs for after all we are the centers yes we yes, like that word yeah. Yeah. And, and so we are living i am living for my children mm. and i believe that once you have become a parent you are living for your children mm. and if you are not yet a parent you are living for somebody else's children mm -hmm. amen <laughs> amen pastor you know that is so true and uh, as we think about it, some of those broken properties may really be representative of broken homes. Mm -hmm. Some may be tied up in the court for whatever reason. Some may be because they don't have the money to pay the administrative fees. All right. And it could be because as well that owner is probably living abroad and has no one here that they can trust to take care of that property. So it could be for several reasons. But we really want to encourage you to think about what you own. What are those assets that you have? What are things that are valuable to you? Your house, your land, your money. What else? Your vehicle, um, things in the, a bank account maybe. You have a business. What happens to that after you die? And you can think about giving it now while you're alive into Vivo's gift, gift while you are alive. Give those to your children or your nieces, whoever it is that you want to give it to. But you decide who you give it to the church. You can make deed of gifts so that they don't have to get, you know, tied up with administrative fees because they may not have the fees to pay for it when you pass away. Yeah. Alternatively, you can make you can make a will or a trust, leaving these things there for whoever you like. Because if you don't, here's what's going to happen. The, the law is going to dictate who gets what. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't want who the law says to get it to okay. get it. So make wise choices now. Who do I want to benefit from what I have accumulated over these years? In being a good steward, that is part of it. It's not just, okay, I've paid my tithe and offering during my lifetime. But God has allowed us to get certain things. What happens to it after death? Okay? So those are some things that we would like you to consider as we, as we consider giving back to God and also being good stewards of what he has given to us. Just, just add in one bit. Sure. Um, in summary, make sure it is useful to God or man, mm -hmm. or God and man, mm -hmm. whatever assets you have left. You put things in place to make sure after you die, it's useful to either God or man or both God and man. Yes, yes, that is so true. Because at the end of it, we're being what? Other center? Yes. Other center, yeah. yeah. That's the word for today. Yeah. Back into the chat. <laughs> Other centeredness. Yeah. Proverbs 27, 23 to 27 says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock, so the state of thy affairs, and look well to thy herds, for riches are not forever. And doth the crown endure to every generation? The hair appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household and for the maintenance for thy maidens. Now, this song's a lot crouched in, um, what, shepherd language, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, Pastor, I'm sure that there are some practical applications to be extracted from this as it relates to stewardship. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. And I'm glad that this is a very practical lesson study that we are dealing with. It says be diligent in what you do. And this week, you know, we pastors, we were able to sit with the treasurer of the mission, you know, so that we could get to know financially mm -hmm. the state of our flock. Yes. Okay. Because mm -hmm. even through the finances, you get to, you know, a big pity or a good pity of what is the state of your flock. Mm -hmm. You get to know the state of your life. What is your status, where you are at. Mm -hmm. And so practically what you can do is that you could be strategic. Mm -hmm. You could plan, you know, what you would like to achieve this year. 
what you would like to achieve in three years time, what you would like to achieve in five to 10 years time, mm -hmm. how you can set aside. So the next thing after the strategic planning is the budgeting, yeah. right? So you budget according to the finances that you have coming in, mm -hmm. you know, so you're using wisdom, but beyond the wisdom, there is also a faith aspect to it. Correct. Yes, I, I, and that's how I live my life, you know? I, 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 I do that which is wise, at least I believe it is wise, and then I throw in some faith for some of the things that I that I own that I have come by. I, I really didn't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. But I began saving towards it, budgeting. That's a wise thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I claim by faith mm -hmm. the rest of it. Yeah. And God gave, you know? Yeah. And so that is important. So we want to leave leave us with those three, four things that we could do, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also must always see about our family. First Timothy 5, 8 says, But if any mm -hmm. provide not for his own, mm -hmm. and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an mm -hmm. infidel. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so, and so we must ensure that our spouses, our children, and beyond our children, nephews and nieces, I have many of those, and my mind is always, you know, I'm thinking about them. You know, and I'm so glad that I'm alive and I have an opportunity to minister unto them, either through my finances directly or indirectly through gifts, etc. And so we got to be practical with our stewardship. Amen. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we've been harping on this for the entire quarter about budgeting, you know, and, and just making sure that we do things in a good manner that will be pleasing to God with the things that he has blessed us with. Wednesday lesson was titled, a very strange um, title there, speaks to death bed charity. What does that even mean? What did you all gather from Wednesday's lesson? Mm -hmm. Well, somehow we expanded on it a bit when we spoke about you know um estate planning mm -hmm. but i just add a f I, I just a few more points on it um you know in investment um there is this fellow that i admire a lot he's one of the best investors that the world has ever seen still alive mr warren buffett mm -hmm. one of the things that he does where investment is concerned is that and, and he has been proven to take companies that would have been going down and bring them back, is that he tries to, he ensures, not tries to, he ensures that he gets control over the investment so that with his skill in business and so on, he would be able to apply his principles and his strategies and make it a successful venture, right? One of the things we have to remember with this deathbed situation is that we have no control over anything when we die, hmm. right? That is the time when you have no worries. Don't even worry about funeral expenses because we don't, whoever living, do I even have to follow your wishes, right? So you treat, when you have control is when you are alive. Hmm. We have to be very cognizant of that. And it's always best with the resources that God would have given to you to decide how you pass it on to a next God-fearing person so that it remains in on the side of the gospel mm -hmm. rather than giving it over on the side of things, mm -hmm. the, 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 the devil's side, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to really be, we, we can't be negligent as steward and just hoard everything and bury it like the guy who buried the talent in the parable in 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 um in the bible so we need to really um look at where um where where god would want us to do um with with, with the with the resources that he bless us with so that is where the estate planning and so on comes in okay yeah. right, so i'm just gonna add quickly in a, in a sort of a summary all right it is good that you know while you are you know, preparing for, for debt, you know, to recognize that you can give um, not only to your, your family, your relatives, but you can also give to the church. church and, you know, actually work along that line to ensure that, you know, you give, whether it's property or otherwise, to the church. But it is also very good. So it's good, too, and then it's very good 
while you are yet alive, you know, um, to, to actually allocate through gifting, you know, yes. um, trust services of the church. Yeah. Um, contact such an individual and you can say to that individual, work with me to, so that I can have my properties allocated to, you know, to this church, to that church, so that that church will be able to um, move forward yeah. even while I'm yet alive. And you get to experience the joy of seeing the church move yes, forward. Yes, we've got it all progress. Yeah. Amen, amen. But I just want to touch one thing before we close because we're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. Ellen White in the book Council of, on Stewardship, page 342, penned, in giving to the work of God, you are laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven. All that you lay up above is secure from disaster and loss and is increasing to an eternal and enduring substance and will be registered to your account in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So, um, Elder Milton, just comment on this as it relates to spiritual legacy as we bring this lesson to a close. Right, so I would have traveled to America already. And one of the first things you want to do is first thing to get a visa, which mm -hmm. in, in, in my illustration, the visa would be salvation, mm -hmm. right? But then the next most important thing to do is to get some U.S. money okay, yeah. because they will laugh when you pull out that blue note, right? So you need to store up some heavenly currency and God would have, um, Jesus would have established in the Bible how we could store up this heavenly currency. And, you know, we need to pay attention to that, not only just to hoard material things that are good for this world and leave them, but also we need to convert some of what God would have blessed us with in this country to prepare us when we are going to that other country. I wouldn't want to go to the U.S. and I have 10 U.S. in my pocket. As a matter of fact, once I went and I, I had very little money on me because the leader of the group, I went to that group, had the money and so on. And they asked me so many questions and actually held me back on all of that. Um, you know, because that was a bad sign that you have little money. So we're not going to, we, we need some currency when we're going. Yeah. Lay up treasures in heaven. Yes. Yes, I love that. Wonderful insights shared today. Thank you so much. We have only scratched the surface because of our limited time here. So we encourage you to study the lesson again in depth for yourself and prayerfully ask God to guide you in this whole aspect of giving back. So we hope you are ready for three quiz questions as we bring this lesson to a close. So thank you in advance for your participation. So let's go with these three questions. So if I can get those questions on the screen so they can both hear and see, that will be great. So I'll start. So type your answers in the chat. The first question, fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks, okay? But it's the same word that you will need to fill in those two blanks. Once you get one, you get the other one, mm. all right? First Timothy 6, 6 to 7 says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought blank into this world, and it is certain we carry blank out. What is the missing word? Type it in the chat. Number two, this week's lesson is entitled Getting Back. True or false? This week's lesson is entitled Getting back, is that true or false? Thirdly, another fill in the blank question, using a quotation from Ellen G. White on stewardship, page 342. In giving to the work of God, you are laying up for yourself blank in heaven. In giving to the work of God, you are laying up for yourselves blank in heaven. So we trust you get those answers correct. And you are typing your answers right now as we speak in the chat. So I want to thank Pastor Richard Frederick and Elder Milton Eastman for joining us today and for sharing such wonderful insights. We thank you viewers as well for joining us and for participating. Let's close with prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we are so thankful that we have been able to study this very important topic in the Bible that is often not spoken about in the church. Lord, we are thankful that you have pointed out to us once again where our obligations lie in terms of stewardship. Continue to bless the viewers out there and bless this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Until next time, be faithful to God because he is ever faithful to you. We'll see you for Lesson 11, Managing in Tough Times. And whoa, it's tough times, so we need to learn how to manage. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath.
keep a keen ear as we listen to our announcements for Sabbath 11 March 2023. Next Sabbath, yes, next Sabbath, we have our Global Youth Day Motorcade. We meet at Lowlands Mall at 8.30 a.m. as we venture to the Cuddler Hall Recreational Ground. So come out in your numbers, in your uniforms, your Pathfinder uniform, your Master Guide uniform, or your Adventure uniform. Also, come out in your Global Youth Day Jersey 2023 as we celebrate Christ and showcase God and be the sermon on March 11, 2020. Three. On April 7th, 8th, and 9th, join us for Resurrection Revival. Stay tuned for more information. This coming week, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can join us for Sunday night service at 6 p.m. And on Wednesday at 6 p.m. also, join us for sweet hour of prayer as our prayer team intercedes to God on your behalf. Starting this week, join us every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. for our Adventist Information Network programming. Also, next Friday evening as you gather your family and friends, join us at 6.30 p.m. as we welcome the Sabbath. Come and let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord as we worship together. And from 7.15 p.m., yes, 7.15 p.m., the Youth War Talk reminds you to tune in and be a part of their great discussion. And we'll be continuing with the fruits of the Spirit. And on Sabbath morning, see you once again at 9.15 a.m., when we meet again and thank God for carrying us safely through another week. A helping hand was given to me at a time when I felt I couldn't see. I felt so down and so alone. What would happen next was unknown. I felt the world was against me, but out of the blue, a helping hand was offered to me. I felt like an angel had been sent, helping me to a great extent. It was hard to accept, but no choice I had. And when I accepted, it wasn't so bad. At that time, I vowed I would help others like me. Because of the help I got, it set me free. So if you need a helping hand, don't let pride take over. Just understand, we should all help each other. Because in the end, we are all sisters and brothers. We have all encountered situations where we could not have made it on our own. Thankfully, we got that assistance and support from someone else. I am sure that that help that was given to you, you would like to give to someone else. Join us at I Provide Ministries. We are a group of eager young people who want to share our love by helping those in need. If you are interested in joining, you can contact our school director, Mrs. Frederick at 612-4872. Let's work together and spread love throughout Tobago. I provide. You 
you provide let's provide let's provide let's provide
Saved is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou fallest.
Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Our speaker today is Elder Natasha Brown Allen. She is a dynamic preacher for the Lord and fits in wherever she is asked to minister. She is one of our hosts and one of our preachers, and you also know her as the moderator for our adult lesson study every week right here on ASI Media Tobago. Elder Natasha is married to evangelist Roger Allen, and together, they are both fishers of men. She is an attorney at law by profession, an author, and has worked in various departments at her local church, Signal Hill Seventh-day Adventist. 
elder Natasha loves to work with children and the youth and continues to hold on to one of her favorite texts, Philippians 4.13. I invite you to give an attentive ear to the message Elder Natasha Brown Allen shares with us today and may your hearts be transformed. Happy Sabbath again to all our brothers and sisters here on ASI Media Tobago. Welcome and thank you so much for staying with us. We've had a wonderful Sabbath service so far. And now we are about to get into God's word. I trust you had a great week. And when I say a great week, I don't necessarily mean that it was problem free. But if even if you faced some problems this week, you knew that you can count on your great problem solving God. Amen. I have two requests of you today before I begin. Is that all right? I want you to whisper a prayer in your heart before and during this message for God to, one, speak through me, and two, for God to speak to you directly from his word. With that in mind, bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Father, Oh, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that you've been such a good God to us. You're ever faithful, you're ever loving, you're ever merciful. Even now, we pray that you'll be with us at this midday hour. Speak to us and meet the specificity of each need today. Bless everyone here on ASI Media and who will eventually hear this message. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I'm ever grateful for this opportunity to speak to you in this capacity. Our topic for today for discussion and for consideration is it's time to cross over. Somebody type in the chat, it's time to cross over. And if you're there with someone in your close proximity, in your close vicinity, look at them and say, hey, it's time to cross over. It's time to cross over, friends, from your obstacles and from your problems, from your situations and the like, which impede your walk with God. But might I say from the onset that crossing over is not always easy as one, two, three. To get from point A to point B requires some effort. Crossing over has a purpose. It has a purpose for the crossing, in the crossing, and after the crossing. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark. The chapter is four. All three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, record this account fondly known as the stilling of the storm on the lake. But as usual, Mark contains some more details. Let's go there and we'll start from verse 35. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The word of God says, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Friends, Jesus had taught uh, those around him that day in parables. He had a busy day. He had a full day of ministry. By the end of the day, he was tired. But it seems as if his day was not yet ended. He said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. It's time to cross over, my friends. Notice Jesus did not tell them, you go and cross over. No, he said, let us cross over. I hope you got that. In other words, even if you do not see me in the ship, know that I am in the ship with you because you can count on my words. You can count on me. Let us cross over. I've come by here to tell somebody from the onset that he is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I know right now some of our listening friends are feeling as if God is not there. But my friends, I've come by here this morning to assure you that God is right there with you. He says to you today, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody say amen. He says to you today, I am with you always even unto the end of the world do i hear somebody say hallelujah he says to you today let us cross over 
It's time to cross over, my friends. Verse 36 continues. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the winds, the waves rather, beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Point two. In the crossing over to the other side, we will encounter some storm. Somebody type storm. Somebody type storm. There will be some turbulence on the sea. But I read a quote on the internet which said, you can't cross the sea merely by standing and staring at the water. You've got to get into the boat. Let me use this opportunity to suggest to you today to get into the boat of safety before it is too late. Imagine with me the commotion on the boat that day as the waves kept a steady beating and crashing over the boat. The rain soaked their clothing. The boisterous thunder bellowed all around them. The thick darkness of the night made their visibility low. They rode until their muscles ached. As if that was not enough, they had the constant struggle of bailing water out of the boat to ensure that it didn't sink and they could meet a dry land safely. Their overall strength was diminishing. The disciples were overcome with fear, panic, anxiety, worry about the possibility of them perishing. The disciples desperately struggled on their own to keep the small boat afloat. Uh, sometimes we are there and we are given it all we got. We, give it, we are given it all our strength, forgetting that we can rely on the ever helping God. Verse 38 says, but he, hallelujah, referring to Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Uh, they began uh, to question Jesus' love and care for them and for their safety. And they began to wonder if he would allow them to drown in the raging sea. Ah, friends, today, have you ever been there? Have you ever felt as if uh, Jesus was comfortably asleep on a pillow while you were struggling to stay alive? I've had my share of those moments, truth be told. And you know what the sad reality is? I behaved just like the disciples. I cried out desperately, where are you, God? Uh, do you even care that I am perishing? Why me? Truth be told, many of us, like the disciples, when we are faced with the storms of life and we begin to complain, we begin to panic, we begin to worry, we begin to fear, we forget that Jesus is right there with us. Some of us are faced and are still facing such storms right now. Perhaps it's the storm of sickness, perhaps the storm of depression, grief owing to the death of a loved one. Perhaps it's the storm of low or no finances, marital problems, joblessness. Perhaps it's, it's, it's the storm of you needing a home of your own, a life partner. Some of you are feeling as if you are standing before a Red Sea with the Egyptians in hot pursuit behind you, mountains on each side, unable to turn to the left or to the right, your back against a wall, unable to retreat or progress. Some of you are stricken with worry and anxiety about what will happen to you, what will happen to your loved ones, what does the future hold with so many odds against us, rising prices, criminal activity, pandemics, what does the future hold? We too question, does Jesus care? A songwriter dedicated an entire song to answering the question of so many hearts. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or sound as the burdens press and the cares distressed and the way goes weary and long? Does Jesus care when I've tried and failed to resist some temptation strong? When for my deep grief there is no relief though my tears flow all the night long? 
Who does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me and my sad heart aches until it nearly breaks? Is it all to him? Does he even see? Friends, I've come by here to tell you, yes, he cares. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with all grief. Ah, when the days are weary and the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Oftentimes, when the doctor gives a diagnosis, instead of thinking about our ever-caring God, we think about death. Instead of thinking about our ever caring God and change our lifestyle, we begin to know, we begin to think about how we can change our last will and testament. Instead of magnifying the God who created us and the God who cares and who loves us, we begin to magnify the problem. Our friends, by doing this, we give the devil undeserved credit. Somebody type undeserved credit. The devil does not have the power to harm us except he gets permission from God. And if God has permitted it, then like Job, God knows that you can handle it. Not on your own strength, of course, but he knows that he will be with you every step of the way. At every wave on the storm tossed sea, God is with you. Whether it be low tide or high tide, God is with you. At every blow of the terrifying wind, God is with you. At every peal of the terrible thunder, God is with you. At every strike of the lightning, God is with you. So don't miss the point, my friends. Turn your fear into fate. Turn your panic into prayer. Turn your worry into worship. Turn your anxiety into assurance. In other words, change your attitude in the storm and witness the power of God. Is there somebody listening to me today? Notice, my friends, that Jesus was right there in the boat. Asleep on a pillow. He hadn't gone anywhere. But I'd rather be in a boat with Jesus asleep than in a boat where he's not there at all. I, I, I hope somebody heard me. I'd rather be there in a boat where Jesus is asleep but to, than to be in a boat where he is not there at all. Philippians 4, 6 tells us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. It was Israel Mo Ayova who penned, you dance in the storm. Don't wait for the rain to be over before because it might take too long. You can do it now. Wherever you are right now, you can start right now, this very moment. In other words, instead of panicking in the storm, begin to pray and praise in the storm. Instead of worrying in the storm, begin to worship God in your storm. Instead of being fearful, be faithful. God has already given us the assurance that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Uh, when they walk through the, war, the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Isaiah 43, 2. And Psalm 46, 1 to 3 gives us further assurance. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Uh, therefore, my Bible tells me, will we not fear though, though even the earth be removed? And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Why? Verse 7 tells us, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. It's time to cross over. Verses 39 to 41 in the book of Mark chapter 4 continues by saying, then he referring to Jesus, arose. Did I hear somebody say amen? Am I seeing somebody typing amen? Type, he arose. And he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Somebody type in the chat, peace, be still. And if you're there in the vicinity where someone is, turn to them and tell them, peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, my Bible tells me, and there was a great calm. Uh, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? 
and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? The disciples had to experience the stormy crossing over to test their faith and to build their faith. You see, they had been with Jesus. They had heard his sermons. They had seen him perform many miracles, yet their faith was not where it was supposed to be. Ah, friends, aren't we the same today? Some of us have been with Jesus for a very long time. We have heard sermons after sermons. We have seen him perform miracles in our lives, yet our faith is not where it is supposed to be. Have mercy, Lord. Today is no different than that evening with the disciples. The disciples felt abandoned even though Jesus was right there with them. They questioned his love for them and whether he cared for them or not. And we do the same. But don't miss the point. Sometimes, sometimes, God will allow us to go through some experiences to build our faith. Why? Because Hebrews 11, 6 points out, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Why? For we, the Bible says, the Christian must walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians 5, 7. Why? Because according to Habakkuk 2, 4, the just shall live by faith. The Apostle Paul employed this quotation as a theme of a dissertation on righteousness by faith. In Romans 1, 16 and 17, Galatians 3, 11, and Hebrews 10, 38 and 39. When the Apostle Paul quoted this Old Testament declaration that the just shall live by faith, he understood the context in which it was used in Habakkuk. Follow me here. In Habakkuk 2 verse 4, the statement means that the upright, humble man, the just man, will go forward in faith, trusting the wisdom and providence of God. In contrast with the proud man whose soul is lifted up and who doubts the wisdom and justice of God's dealing with men. During the Chaldeans' invasions, which was permitted by God because the people as a society had strayed from righteous living, Habakkuk was comforted by the assurance that the righteous person is kept safe by his trust and confidence in God. A similar meaning may be seen by Paul's use of this quotation in Romans 1.17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. In other words, the just man will not live by reliance on his own works and merit, but by confidence and faith in God. Put another way, it is by faith alone that a just, that a man rather can be righteous before God. In Galatians 3.11, Paul used a declaration in Habakkuk 2.4 to make the point that the Lord does not give salvation. It is faith in God that brings justification. In other words, the man who is just will exercise faith. Further, the man who exercises faith will, as a result of his faith, be considered just. Paul declares, and I concur, that faith is the fundamental prerequisite to acceptance with God. Friends, God has promised to those who remain faithful the reward of eternal life. As an athlete receives a prize after a successful performance, so the just persons, so the faithful ones will receive the promise after having done the will of God. And they will hear from his lips, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I've come by here to tell somebody today that God is right there with you. You cannot see him, but you can trust him. You need only exercise faith and accept him as your ever-present help in time of trouble. You see, what we experience as sudden emergency is never a surprise to our God. He is always several steps ahead of us. He is all-knowing. He dwells in the past, the present, and the future. 
My Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, though there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that, ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape uh, that you will be able to bear it. I thank God that even sometimes when we doubt his love for us, sometimes when our faith isn't at 100%, he steps in and he declares to the elements of our storm, peace, be still. It was Vincent Van Gogh who wrote, who wrote, there is peace even in the storm. Why? Because God is with us. As long as God is there with us, we will be all right. Psalm 119, 165 tells us, great peace have they who which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. In the words of Psalm 46, 10 and 11, be still, be still, my friends, and know that he is God. He says to us, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is what? The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Uh, when you have crossed over one trial, the sad reality is there is likely to be another trial waiting on you on the other side. Ask the disciples. Mark 5 transitioned in verses 1 and 2. It tells us, and they came over unto the other side of the sea. Let us pause there. My friends, when God is with you in the crossing over, you will reach the other side safely. Yes, you will encounter some storms along the way, but like the disciples, you will live to tell the story. You will live to give the testimony. You will live to tell somebody about the experience. You will make it to the other side. Ah, friends, there can never be a test without a testimony, rather, without a test. There can never be a victory if there were no battle. Our friends, we got to go through some stuff in this life. We ain't going to go to heaven just, uh, ju just as we are without facing any difficulties. And Jesus faced so much trials in his own experience. He even faced death. Friends, likewise, we too will face some troubles. But he has said to us, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if he has overcome, then we are assured that we too will overcome. Mark 5, 1 and 2 continues. So they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Let us stop there. As I point out uh, this closing point or second to last point in this message, there's always another storm. It's just the way the world works. Snowstorms, rainstorms, windstorms, sandstorms, firestorms. Some will be fierce and others will be small. But there will always be a storm waiting on you around the corner. It's either you're in one, you're coming out of one, or you're going into one. Yes, storms will come regardless of your status, your education, your location, your vocation, your situation, or your religion. Storms will come. Some storms will be sent by the devil. That's true. But some God will allow for himself to test our faith or redirect our faith. Yes, Jonah. He was supposed to go to Nineveh, you know the story well, to preach, but he decided to travel in the opposite direction. He was supposed to go to preach, but he decided to hide. God had sent him to Nineveh, but he decided to go to Tarshish. God sent a storm to redirect Jonah, and God was with him in the storm and in the belly of the fish. Likewise, Jesus was with the disciples while they were going through their storms, and he was right there with them on the other side of the shore when they faced the demon-possessed man, the man with the unclean spirit. Friends, if we use the lessons and the tools that we should have gained while we were crossing over in that previous storm experience, 
we will be better prepared and equipped and positioned to face the next storm. But oftentimes, we miss the lesson inherent in the storm, and therefore, we got to face that storm again. Have mercy, Lord. But I want to assure you that when you come out of the storm, I saw someone wrote this, when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what the storms are all about. Friends, when you come out of an experience, you are going to be better for it. Friends, when you come out of an experience, you're going to be stronger for it. Friends, when you come out of an experience, you're going to be more faithful because of it. Imagine, imagine, imagine with me that you are out in the middle of a lake. And there are two rowboats. And you are standing with one foot in each boat. One boat, however, is filled with holes and is sinking fast. It is obvious that unless you do something, you will soon be in the lake. The boat with the holes represents ourselves, represents us with all the leaks caused by sin. The boat without holes represents Jesus Christ. It should be, it should be obvious that with one foot in each boat, we will one day end up in the same place that we would have ended up in if we had both feet in the boat with all the holes, the boat marked self. The only safe place is to have both feet firmly planted in the boat marked Jesus Christ, in the boat where Jesus is. Friends, our only safety is being with Jesus. No matter when the storms rage around us, once Jesus is there with us, we are assured deliverance. Friends, we are in the last days. Perilous times are here. We can look at the news and you can see for yourself that we are in the last, in the last days. And God wants us to cross over from the shores of this transient life to the shores of eternity. Where, my friends, there will be peace, uh, joy, there will be happiness, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more high gas bill, no more high telephone bill, no more high grocery bill, just no more bills to pay for the former things are passed away. But to get there... To get there, my friends, it's time for us to cross over, over negativity in our lives. We've got to cross over doubt in our lives. It's time to cross over ungratefulness. It's time to cross over pride. It's time to cross over unforgiveness. It's time to cross over all the sins in our lives which so easily beset us. Uh, God wants you to cross over from this no faith experience to a spiritual experience where you have a firm and sure faith experience, where you can sing, uh, my faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me would plead. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Ah, God wants us, my friends, to cross over from the pain in our lives to a place Place of praise. Ah, God wants us to cross over from this stagnant spot that we have come to, to a place where living waters flow. Ah, do I have a witness here today? Ah, God wants us to cross over from the land of the Egyptians where God is not worshipped ah, to the land of Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey where he alone will be worshipped. Yes, the crossing over will have some turbulence. Yes, the crossing over will have some Egyptians following you. But even if the Egyptians follow you, know that they will be swallowed even in the waters. I read this story somewhere where this little boy was sitting one day and he was reading the story where the, where the Israelites were freed from Egyptians' bondage and they were close to the Red Sea with the Egyptians in hot pursuit. And he began to, and he was so excited about how God delivered them. And he began to shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. How oh, when a stately man who was uh, attending a seminary school nearby came up to the young chap and he said, son, what got you so excited? He said, well, 
God delivered all the children of Israel through the Red Sea. He dried up the land, allowed them to cross over, and then uh, the Egyptians were swallowed. It was, it was just fantastic. The man said, you know, it didn't take much for God to carry them across the, the Red Sea. In fact, the Red Sea was quite shallow at that time, so it, it didn't take nothing much for them to just waddle across. It didn't take nothing much. The boy looked at him a little puzzled, and then he looked back at his Bible, and he lifted up his head again, and he began to shout, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. How the man turns back around to find out what this fresh excitement was all about. The young man said, well, God is even greater than I thought. Because if the sea was, if, if the water was so shallow, about 10 inches, you say, that they could have just passed over and waddled over, wow, then God must be, must be so amazing that the entire Egyptian army with all its, its, its animals, with all its horses and its chariots, everything died in 10 inches of water. He said, that's an amazing God. And he started to shout hallelujah. The man could not say a word. And so he walked away. And the young boy continued to shout for joy. Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, God, you're so faithful. Oh, God, you're so powerful. Friends, today I want to let you know that God is ever powerful. He's ever faithful. And no matter what the situation is, he can help you to cross over. It's time to cross over. How God wants you to cross over from the puzzled, mangled state of affairs which you now experience to a place of peace. Is there somebody here today who wants to cross over? from the ordinary to the extraordinary? Is there somebody here today who wants to cross over from being an in the river, on the bank type of Christian to a place of full commitment and full surrender? Is there somebody here today who wants to experience this firm faith that God requires of us? It's time to cross over. Too long we've been in the place where the devil is happy that we are. Too long we've been in a place where worry has taken over our being. But I've come by here to tell you that worry could only get you sick, but worship could get you better. So my friends, our God is, is God before the storm. Our God is God during the storm. Our God is God after the storm. Our God is forever God, and he is forever with us. My friends, the experience in the crossing over may be unpleasant sometimes, especially when the weather conditions are unfavorable. Uh, some upset stomach and maybe some vomiting may occur. If you have ever been on the ferry between Trinidad and Tobago, you can attest to what I'm talking about. Uh, but sometimes it is a necessary ride if you want to get your vehicles over, if you want to travel for a less price, or if you have to move goods between the islands. Well, then in a spiritual sense, the crossing over is necessary, even though it may have some unpleasant times for our development, for our salvation, for our faith-building experience. But as I said before, God is with us through it all. So not because the journey feels lonely, and not because the journey feels uncertain, not because you might be feeling uh, unsure about what is happening and whether you will get to the other side, and uh, not because of all of this means that God is not there. Uh, God is right there with you. And friends, he's going to bring you over to the other side. So there are three kinds of people. Rowboat people, sailboat people, and steamboat people. Robot people need to be pushed or shoved along. Sailboat people move when a favorable wind is blowing. But steamboat people move continuously through calm or storm. Do I have some 
steamboat people on the live this morning. Type steamboat in the chat. Through calm or storm, we will continue to move. Why? Because Emmanuel is ever present. God is with us. I've come by here to tell somebody, God can, no storm rather, can prevent the purpose of our God. Our God is the creator of all the elements of nature. And when he said, on that day, when the storm threatened the lives of the disciples, when he said, peace, be still, there was peace. My friends, God is about to arise in your life. God is about to rebuke the wind of negativity, the wind of failure, the wind of strife, the wind of brokenness, the wind of poverty, the wind of sickness, the wind of pain and hurt, the wind of fear. God is about to speak peace into your storm right now. Your prayer request is about to become your praise report. Uh, do I have somebody on the live who wants to shout hallelujah, thank you Jesus. God says to us today, it is time to cross over. Who will you trust him and get into the ship with him? He wants to have a relationship with you. Will you get into this relationship with him? Is there somebody here today? You are not yet in a saving relationship with God. I encourage you to get into that saving relationship with him. And may God bless you as you take his hand and cross over safely to the other side. To the side where there is peace, not just for a time, but for eternity. Let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. We thank you for this word that watered our hearts today. We are grateful to know that you are with us in our storms. You are with us in our struggles and you are ever present to help us. Oh, Father, there is somebody here today who is facing their storm. I pray that you will make your presence known to them so that they can experience your peace in their lives. And Father, as we take your hands, we give you all permission to carry us over to the other side safely. We thank you. We glorify you. We praise you today for victory. We praise you for our praise report. We praise you for our testimony. We praise you, dear Lord, for the victory we would have wrought even after this storm, for the lessons we would have learned through this storm, and for the preparation and positioning for the next storm. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him oh and oh Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh Grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith. To 
plunge me need the healing cleansing blood Jesus Jesus how I trust him and how I proved him o'er and o'er Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more I'm so glad I've learned to trust him precious Jesus Savior friend and I know that thou art with me will be with me till the end Jesus Jesus how I trust him and how I proved him oh and oh Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more Jesus Jesus how I trust him and how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust.